what we've got here are two print heads from a Kodak ESP 2170 all in one printer. Uh, this one here is the one that, uh, that failed. This is the one that actually came with the printer from the store, and this is the replacement unit that uh, Kodak, uh, Kodak sent um, when the original one failed. And there's a couple of differences between them. We've got a new PCB design uh, on the back. We've got larger gold contacts on the bottom. This is actually upside down, just so I don't get ink on the table. Um, and it seems like they've had a bit of a redesign um, on it, but apart from the physical differences, I can't really see um, many other uh, many other changes. Um, this uh, let's go back to the uh, let's go back to this one here. Now it got me a bit curious because I wanted to know why this actually failed in the first place. Um, this print head hadn't done that much work, uh, to be completely fair. Uh, but when I sort of had a very much of a closer look, if we can, I'm not entirely sure how close we can get to the camera here. Um, we can see. Um, these cold, uh, gold pads here uh, make contact with uh, some pressurised pins, uh, which remain in the uh, in, in the carrier, um, in the print cartridge. So you've got the pins on the back, and this goes in and makes contact with it. What appears to have happened is that uh, this doesn't show up fully, can't quite see it, uh, is that the pin contact point has actually gone through the gold pad uh, into the actual PCB material. So we have you know problems here. Uh, it's just about gone through there. There's a little bit of green showing there as well. Slight problem there and there was another one somewhere else. Anyway, it's irrelevant, you get the point. So yeah, in these little places it was uh, it was almost rubbing through. Um, and the only thing I can think that would do that is if you have movement of the print head in the carrier. So every time it's making, you know, going back and forth with the cartridge in, you're getting a slight amount of rotational movement, or maybe a bit of sideways one. Uh, probably more rotational, I would have thought, given the actual look of the damage, because it's perfectly circular. Uh, and it's just slowly gnawed its way through the gold plating uh, to the PCB. Um, so I can only imagine that they, part of the cost cutting is that they, the gold plating on this is extremely thin. Yeah, it was, it was enough just to get by, just to make a uh, good lot of contact, but it was not enough for uh, long-term durability. Um, so God knows how many, uh, how thin the, the gold is on that. But anyway, it didn't take much to go straight through it. Um, it changes from that one to this one. Ah, oh, well, I can't tell the thickness of the. Uh, Sorry about that. So I can't tell the thickness of the uh, gold because I don't have anything to do that. But uh, this one hasn't done a lot of work. This print head. Uh, there's still a few pressure points on it, but nothing's actually gnawed its way through um, to the PCB itself. We've got some longer contacts down here, which don't really make any sense because there's only one single point, which you can just see there. Only one single actual contact point. Um, Along there, so maybe this print head is actually used on uh, different models of the uh, of the Kodak uh, ESP series, and maybe the contacts vary. So perhaps they came out with an all-in-one design, you know, single print head that could just be fitted amongst the entire range. Uh, that would be one way of keeping manufacturing costs down. Um, so yeah, so this one still works at the moment, uh, but to be honest with you, given the rest of the printer, as you may have seen from my previous video, uh, I. I don't see for how long for. Uh, anyway, well, before I was actually doing this video, I just uh, did a demo print of it and uh, it came up with just this demo page here and uh, previous event codes, which I didn't know anything about beforehand. Uh, just hide the serial number for the moment. But interestingly, look at that. Yep, that is the total amount of pages. That this ESP has managed to uh, print in its lifetime. 
and we've already been through one print head and uh, the other failure as well, um, which is on another one of my videos on my channel. Uh, pretty much rendered the entire thing dead, so it never even got to 800 sheets, which is pathetic. In fact, it's beyond pathetic. Couldn't even make a thousand. Absolutely, just piss poor. Uh, so yeah, so it's possibly not surprised that Kodak don't make printers, or I don't think they make anything now. I think they've gone bust, haven't they? Not entirely sure. Um, so yeah, it's a uh, it's not really surprising. I think there was too many uh, too many corners cut uh, for the engineering design of the printer. They tried to jump in at a certain end of the market with their cheap prints. Uh, the cheap inks, sorry, and uh, I don't think it uh, it quite worked out. The quality of the printers was not good enough uh, at all. It was a nice attempt, but it, if, if you keep the thing powered up and make continuous prints, then you're going to get more prints out of the Codex series than you do out of other ones if you're doing it continuously. Where this falls flat on its face is that nobody actually uses it like that. Nobody powers up a printer and then runs off, you know, 50 full sheets of coloured paper in a go. Sorry, coloured, uh, you know, coloured photos, whatever else, in a go. Because in real life, you switch off the printer, you switch it back on again, and each time it does a cleaning pass, um, and it seems to just suck the ink straight out. Um, so in real life, it's, you know, I've, well, to demonstrate this, I've got a, a brand new black cartridge, which has been uh, put in maybe two weeks ago. Uh, it has printed out, uh, this is whilst I was trying to fix the other fault with it uh, on my other video, it's printed out, I think, between 8 and 10 test pages. Um, those were calibration, you know, the calibration sheets. Uh, and as of this morning, it's now telling me that the black is empty already. So, yes. Uh, anyway. I weep with the despair sometimes. So uh, I'll probably be going back to a Canon printer after this, to be completely honest with you. I used to have uh, a couple of those years ago, and they just used to go on and on and on. Um, I don't know if the quality of Canons is still the same, but we'll soon find out. Because if it isn't, there'll be another ranting video on YouTube. Anyway, I hope that might have uh, been relatively informative uh, for some of you. Uh, I might at some point, if I'm really bored one day, uh, just clean up those pads and uh, I'll just put a blob of solder, really, really small amount of solder, just to cover up the damaged area. Uh, and just out of interest, uh, I might just reinstall it in the printer and uh, see if it fires back up. But this has been out for quite a while now and the ink is really, really dried um, in there. So if I did, I'd have to be putting thinners through that to uh, try and free that all up again. But anyway, like I said, if I'm bored, I'll do it and I'll upload it. Anyway, cheers for now. Bye.